So many references to Las Vegas. Yeah. I mean, dang, they filled this thing to the brim. <laughs> and when I started my drawing, the first song that was playing was ZZ Top's Viva Las Vegas. Um, you mean Elvis's Viva Las Vegas? <laughs> nope, ZZ Top did a song as well called Viva Las Vegas. And they also had a guy that acted like Elvis in the song. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably even based on that song. Could be a cover. Very likely. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic. Season 6, Episode 20. Viva Las Pegasus. <laughs> Sorry, had to. <laughs> <laughs> and now to go over some references real quick, specifically the posters that were being shown. One of them was based off of Chris Angel's Mind Freak. Another one was based off of Britney's Piece of Me. Of course, another one is based off of Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du Soleil, at least if I read that correctly. And of course, the classic Siegfried and Roy, which was the most obvious one in my head, and along with Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> yes, well, if they'd made Siegfried and Roy any more obvious, I mean, they even had to have one of the prairie dogs be white with tiger stripes. Mm -hmm. And, of course, a visible cutie mark on one of them was a tiger. Mm-hmm. Ah. But now on to the actual episode itself. The first half was nice, but I really enjoyed the second half, where it seemed to be based off of the TV show Leverage, which is based on a bunch of crooks and scam artists getting together to actually right wrongs of people who are scammed or tricked by others. <laughs> Well, Flim and Flam are not that kindly motivated. They were more about revenge, as we see at the end of the episode that this was a one-time-only special. Emphasis on one time. Mm-hmm. Well, who knows in the future? I would love for them to have a redemption arc, but be spread out over episodes they keep getting introduced to every time they find out that, you know, being good is more profitable, brother. I concur. Let's be good and make a ton of money. <laughs> It's going to take a while. I see they're going to be more like the American Jesse James Meowth Team Rocket, where everything never goes their way, except on the rare occasions that they happen to end up doing something good. But it never sticks. Mm -hmm. When it really should. It really should. <laughs> but I'm glad that we actually got AJ reacting properly to Flum and Flam of like, God damn those two. And she hasn't really forgiven them. But she's like, okay, we're going to use them just this once. <laughs> mm -hmm. And because Flim and Flam and Applejack have a history together, that worked both directions. You know, Fluttershy pointed out how it worked because it made Applejack go look for other friendship problems. But the big way it worked out was that Flim and Flam know Applejack does not lie. So if she says that Gladmane was pulling all these stunts, then Gladmane was pulling all these stunts. Quickest reconciliation ever. I really like that point, too, when they were like both looking at each other like, wait a minute, she doesn't lie. Much. <laughs> and even when we got her to lie, she still came out and told the truth, so there's no way she's possibly lying. <laughs> uh, and I must say that this episode handled the brothers fighting and getting resolved better than in the comics with Granny Smith and those two at a carnival, I believe. It's been forever since I read that particular comic. Don't look at me. I haven't read mine in forever, and I kind of set them aside as um, licensed fan fiction. <laughs> uh, like every novelization of almost every series out there. But yeah, I, I find that they handled the whole brothers fighting and resolution a little bit better in this episode than what I remember from the comics. And I do like how it was all handled. And Jesus, Fluttershy, you were, you were growing up. I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just the glee on her face was like, I know something you don't. Like two brothers that happen to be... <laughs> That happen to be the ultimate tricksters and have a grudge to settle. And the look on her face when she was holding down the button and I gotcha. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Gladmane was not a very nice pony and Fluttershy is all about kindness. So taking down a mean pony isn't 
awesome thing for Fluttershy. Let's see. Do I have any more points I can remember right now? Mm, no. Let's move on to your points so I can bring up my points along the way as I remember them. Aha! All right. One obvious reference that we didn't bring up was that Gladmane's accent and mannerisms are heavily influenced by Elvis Presley. Though I don't recall any stories of Elvis Presley being a swindler, so I don't know if they just chose to emulate Elvis in some ways in order to have that Las Vegas feel, because Elvis and Vegas kind of go together. And it also matches the title of the episode if you think about it. But I also thought he kind of resembled Liberace in a way, because Liberace is also famous for being in Las Vegas. And having glittery costumes and stuff, but the later Elvis had a lot of glitzy glittery costumes and the main style was much more Elvis and nice touches that you know it had to be Applejack and Fluttershy to do this it wasn't just Applejack's mistrust of Flem and Flam and Fluttershy's kindness Fluttershy's ability to talk to animals because the animals were present and heard both sides of Gladmane's manipulations so they were able to tell the truth to Fluttershy so that they could get the rest of the picture. Of course, I love the reaction of, we have to go to Las Pegasus? Us? But, uh, yeah, that, that would kind of be my reaction. I, I don't care what you want, I, I'm, I'm not going. I don't have enough money for that! But that's me. <laughs> <laughs> well... Being the dear friends of Princess Twilight Sparkle, I'm sure Gladmane would have comped them everything, right up to the point where they ran him out of business. Because <laughs> I heard they have some nice arcades in Las Vegas. They do. Because I'm certainly not going there to gamble. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, but the arcade in Las Vegas has looked really nice. But I'm sorry, how difficult is DDR when you have four hooves? Uh, maybe it's like a game of Twister. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, this is either really easy or really hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also, a little artistic detail in the episode is when Gladmane puts his hooves on the glass, the top part of his hooves actually show that it's a wide surface area pressing against the glass, which doesn't really mesh with at least what I remember of how really the bottom of Pony's hooves actually look, it would only be a small rim touching the glass, but they show this whole surface area, like maybe there actually is a soft padding on the bottom of MLP Pony's hooves, which may explain how they can grab stuff. Yes, well, every time you see some pony gesturing with their hooves, which we see fairly often, the hoof itself looks completely flat. Well, this was just a fun episode, and we had plenty of episodes since the last Table Tree Castle Map one, so it was about time for a Table Tree Castle Map adventure. At the same time, it was in some ways a very low-key episode. Is even though there was fighting going on and there was a problem, nobody really felt like they had a problem because of the way everything was set up. Gladmane was a master manipulator. Because even though the acts were fighting with each other, Neither of them wanted to leave and strike out on their own or, you know, convince the other partner to go with them. They felt so indebted to Gladmane and so glad to have him as a friend that they just stayed. Another quick thing I'd like to bring up that has something to do with Gladmane is the fact that he would announce discounts over the loudspeakers. And I feel sorry for the cashiers and stuff like that because... They would have to know ahead of time when stuff like that changes because now they're going to have a bunch of people coming up to them like, they said it was half price and, and the poor guys behind the garage are going, I, I, okay. <laughs> well, the loudspeaker would have sent the announcement everywhere. And if this is Gladmain's operating model, there should be discount buttons built into the register. I would hope. <laughs> or a shortcut cheat sheet provided to the cashiers. You know, because since Gladmane's such a master manipulator, he wouldn't want to just hold on to his big axe. He would want to keep all of his staff. Because there is nothing like loyal staff for getting work done. If you can inspire that loyalty, you have an amazing crew. It's just unfortunate that Gladmane was inspiring that falsely. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and we get the classic villain part of like, my meanness works, your friendliness fails. Ha ha! Oh wait, damn it, I messed myself up. Yes. As I really love that our good guy team went with a double layer deception. They're like, well, we knew we wouldn't be able to fool you, so we did it anyways, because we figured you would have to gloat about the fact of how we couldn't fool you. Classic villain trope. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason it reminds me of the TV show Leverage, because the schemes in Leverage would always have more than one layer to them. Because by the end you're like, oh, I, I know where this is going, and then that fails, and then they reveal that they actually did something else, but used that top scheme to cover up the real scheme they were doing to trick the bad guy into being caught, or give back all of his money, or... Yeah, so the first thing's just operating as a distraction. So it's almost like a magic trick. So you, you have your distraction going, and that's what everyone's looking at. But what you're really doing is off to the side. Mm hmm Speaking of magic tricks, I actually wouldn't mind seeing a trapeze act do magic as well, because that would be kind of interesting. It would, but I would rather they not pull a rabbit out of a hat, because unless the rabbit knows trapeze and is very comfortable being up there, then the bunny would be at risk. Also, I think the bunny could talk. That one did say ta-da when it jumped out of the hat. Mm hmm So that makes me think, like, is that bunny special, or...? Are the bunnies, since we've seen how Angel behaves, actually super intelligent? They just pretend that they can't actually talk. <laughs> <laughs> Entirely possible. Or is that more like a parrot, where the bunny has learned to make some, in this instance I have to say pony-like instead of human-like, pony-like sounds. More copying than saying it with any understanding. Kind of like how some people have taught their dogs to go, I want you! Yes. Uh, which is cute as heck. <laughs> it is, but at the same time, it's like, can't you just tell that your dog loves you? Do you really need reinforcement that badly? Is your life that sad? I feel badly for you if it is. So any harsh nitpicks? Did you have any problems with the story? Or did everything flow really well for you? Because you've been mostly doing praising of certain parts of the episode. Well, I really enjoyed this episode, and I'd probably have more to nitpick on a second watching probably stuff going on in the background, but the characters all behaved in ways that I expected. The only thing was it was very obvious to me from the beginning that Gladmane was going to be our villain. Even when Flim and Flam showed up, I was like, no, Gladmane's our villain. So I don't know if maybe it would have been better if that had been handled a little more subtly. But it was more like, as soon as we saw the statue, I was like, okay, that's our villain. And there he is in the flesh. Yeah, that's our villain. Yeah, he's still our villain. Oh, look, there's Fulman Flam. Yeah, he's still our villain. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feared he was a villain, but I was like, I'm going to wait and see. <laughs> Especially someone who's named Goodmane and has a cutie mark as a bunch of coins that are sparkling. Yeah, not that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> And it's Gladmane, not Goodmane. Gladmane, thank you. Don't care, moving on. <laughs> and just because some pony has coins as their cutie mark doesn't make them an evil person. Look at Filthy Rich. Mm, good point. Yeah, it's his wife that's the pain. Mm -hmm, and speaking of Filthy Rich, I like the character they chose for Fluttershy in Possibly Rich. <laughs> That was awesome. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't want to take the effort to speak loud enough for, anyone, for everyone to hear her, so she has someone else speak for her. Yes, it's like, oh yeah, speaking too loud takes too much energy. She devotes that energy to making money instead. I'm like, wow. Also, that keeps anyone from recognizing Fluttershy's voice. And Fluttershy talks in a whisper half the time anyways, so very easy for her. And since she served as Rarity's model a few seasons back, she can walk around very well in that fancy getup, much better than Applejack, even though Applejack did a wonderful job, both with her gala outfit and with her episode to get Rarity to pull her act together in simple ways. That was a nice touch at the end, you know, that whole Gladmane has left the building, because, you know, that's such a classic Elvis phrase. Elvis has left the building. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and Flim and Flam moving right in and oh yes there's no acts or anything else but we still invite you to enjoy the venue and imagine what it could be like and everyone in Las Pegasus is so excited and ready to have a good time that they're like that sounds amazing because I think people's logic centers just turn off in situations like that you know you're just there to have a good time so you're not necessarily thinking about possible pitfalls. And also there's the rumors and myths and stuff like that, that oxygen and stuff like it's pumped into the room to make it, uh, you feel better and stuff like that. That one I hadn't heard, but a lot of the design features are there specifically, and we're in real world now in case you can't tell, uh, designed to keep people to stay. Like there are no clocks in casinos. You cannot see what time it is. You cannot tell whether it's day or night. The machines are close to each other for a reason. That actually makes people feel safer. Casinos that put the machines too far apart and have wide aisles lose people more quickly. The pattern on the rugs, the lighting, all of it is designed to keep people feeling comfortable and staying. You know, same thing with the comp drinks. Oh, we don't want you to get up and leave this machine to go get a beverage, so we'll bring you a beverage if it'll keep your butt in that seat. <laughs> oh, we don't want you to leave to eat. Here's some tickets for our buffet. Everything that they can possibly put into a building like that to keep you inside the building is there. It's kind of like going to a convention. <laughs> Except at the convention, you're there because everything you want is there. I'm just glad we actually both really like this episode. <laughs> Because I enjoyed it. Even through my second watch through, I was like, yeah, I really like this episode. It has a nice flow to it. It feels good. The characters act correctly. I like the way Flim and Flam acted. I liked the references. Just everything about it had a nice flow. <laughs> I just want more pony DDR. <laughs> uh, though this also shows that ponies know about electricity and can generate it. Unless they got a bunch of storm clouds somewhere constantly zapping things thanks to the weather ponies. Because it is in Las Pegasus. Yes, but it's only called Las Pegasus. There were ponies of all types there, which means it has to be on the ground. Because earth ponies and unicorns mm. cannot walk on clouds without special magic. Not really. Uh, the wide shot at the beginning of the episode where that wonderful line of, It's not like we thought. Yeah, it's worse. <laughs> when they zoom out, everything's built on clouds. So there's a lot of work that went on in making it accessible to all pony types. Mm -hmm. I think the special walkways that go between buildings, because there was a cross bridge section that a bunch of different ponies were crossing. So I'm thinking there's walkways in the clouds that other ponies walk on and Pegasus just get around normally. Mm -hmm. So do you have any more thoughts? I thought I had more about the overall design of Lost Pegasus and... I'm not recalling it at the moment. Nah, I know I've had that problem. Oh, got it. It wasn't specifically about Las Pegasus. It was about your comment of electricity generation. We've mm -hmm. had previous signs of that because in Ponyville, Twilight's had a lamp. And the cakes and the apples both use ovens and stoves that do not appear to be wood powered. Hmm, that's a good point. So, should we move on to the end? Mm -hmm. uh, I know I've already stated my overall thoughts, but I may as well go over them again. Nice episode, beginning to end. Lots of great Las Vegas references. I really do hope that they were actually referencing the show Leverage, because that was one of my favorite shows when it was on. And nice little thing of Flim and Flam still being who they are. They weren't reformed. Probably a little bit, but not much. <laughs> They probably have the kernel of like, wait a minute, we can do something with this. <laughs> ah, very enjoyable episode. Nice portrayal of Appajack and Fluttershy. A very nice episode. As you can tell, I pretty much enjoyed this episode. I wish it had been a little less obvious to me that, yeah, Glad means the villain. But, you know, it is a children's show. <laughs> Lots of fun references. Because there would have been a good opportunity here to include a song because of all the variety of performers, and they didn't. So I thought that was kind of nice because you had the option because you had various performers. 
but they didn't try to shoehorn a song in. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 20, Viva Las Pegasus. Oh, thank you for listening. If you want to be notified of new episodes, please subscribe. So if you happen to like Vegas and, you know, throwing money away and not knowing if you're going to get anything back, might suggest a slightly sure bet. Lux Brush has a Patreon, and patrons do get rewards from the artists for contributing, so you would have an actual return on investment. Just a thought. So head on over to my Patreon, link in the description.